Hi, it's Anthony. Welcome back to my show. News about a possible suspect in the D.B. Cooper skyjacking case is all over the media, and I uploaded a video concerning it yesterday. Cooper researcher Eric Eulis believes that three particles of what is described as a titanium antimony alloy was found on the tie that the skyjacker left behind on the plane, and Eulis contends that this was a rare molecule that could be traced back to only one facility, a company called Rem Crew in Pennsylvania. And based on information that he has compiled, he believes that there were only eight people working on that project, and he's identified one who he believes was Cooper based on these three particles. And by the way, spoiler alert, the name of the individual that has been identified is Vince Peterson. So is this the smoking gun or just smoke? Or could it even be an inadvertent red herring? For a moment, let's look at what Wikipedia has to say about the clip on tie left behind. I know that a lot of people get upset with using Wikipedia and say that it's not reliable. My counter to that is that you can look at the edit history. If somebody edits it and puts misleading information in, you can see when that happened. And with so many people interested in the D.B. Cooper case, you can assume that any deliberate errors inserted in the article are probably going to be noted by researchers and reversed. You need to take anything you read on the internet with a grain of salt, but I believe I have far more confidence in Wikipedia than what is sometimes found in the news media or Reddit or other places online and in the real world. Okay, here it is. Clip-on necktie. FBI agents found a black clip-on necktie in seat 18E where Cooper had been seated. Attached to the tie was a gold tie clip with a circular mother of pearl stone in the center of the clip. The FBI determined the tie had been sold exclusively at J.P. Pen at J. C. Penney department stores, but was discontinued in 1968. By late 2007, the FBI had built a partial DNA profile from samples found on Cooper's tie in 2001. However, the FBI also acknowledged no evidence linked Cooper to the source of the DNA sample. Said FBI Special Agent Fred Gutt, the tie had two small DNA samples and one large sample. It's difficult to draw firm conclusions from these samples. The FBI also made public a file of previously unreleased evidence, including Cooper's plane ticket, composite sketches, fact sheets, and posted a request for information about Cooper's identification. In March 2009, a group of citizen sleuths using GPS, satellite imagery, and other technologies unavailable in 1971, began reinvestigating components of the case. Known as the Cooper Research Team, the group included paleontologist Tom Kay from the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture in Seattle, and metallurgist Alan Stone. Although the Cooper Research Team, CRT, obtained little new information about the buried ransom money or Cooper's landing zone, the CRT found analyzed and identified hundreds of organic and metallic particles on Cooper's tie. Using an electron microscope, the CRT identified lycopodium spores, the source of which was likely pharmaceutical. The team also found minute particles of unalloyed titanium on the tie, along with particles of bismuth, antimony, cerium strontium sulfide, aluminum, and titanium antimony alloys. The metal and rare earth particles suggested Cooper may have worked for Boeing or another aeronautical engineering firm at a chemical manufacturing plant or at a metal fabrication and production facility. The material with the most significance, explained K, was the unalloyed titanium. In the 1970s, the use of pure titanium was rare and would only be used in aircraft fabrication facilities or at chemical companies combining titanium and aluminum to store extremely corrosive substances. The cerium and strontium sulfide were used by Boeing's supersonic transport development project and by Portland factories in which cath cathode ray tubes were manufactured, such as Teledyne and Tektronix. Cooper researcher Eric Eulis has speculated that the titanium antimony alloys are linked to Rem Crew Titanium Incorporated a metals manufacturer and Boeing contractor. What is confusing when you read this 
and you compare it against other news articles and information that you find on Cooper websites, is sometimes it sounds like only three particles were found and it was unalloyed or pure titanium. Sometimes the three particles are an alloy of titanium and antimony, which of course is an alloy and not pure titanium. Prior to writing the draft for this video, I did a little bit of research just to see if in fact there were no other people involved with titanium antimony alloys. There was a patent application, I glanced over that. That was rejected eventually by the patent department and I glanced over the lawsuit contesting that decision. The patent application was filed in the early 1950s. Even if they would have been granted a patent, I believe that patents in the United States usually last 10 years, so after that period of time anybody could have utilized the information and the patent for commercial purposes. Even if there was a patent issued, which there was not, other people could have utilized the process and findings of the patent, which was simply combining those two elements to make a stronger form of titanium. So the company associated with the patent would not necessarily be the only one where that particular substance could be found. And then in fact I found a Norwegian scientific journal article about researchers dealing with such an alloy between the time of the patent application and the time of the Cooper hijacking. And there was a number of other elements found on the clip-on which ties it to a number of other companies within the high-tech and aircraft manufacturing world, especially in the Pacific Northwest. And then there is the presence of the lycopodium spores, which, as it's pointed out in the Wikipedia article, would be found in some pharmaceutical manufacturing. Why would somebody, if they were the individual proposed by Eric Eulis, have spores that would normally be found in pharmaceutical manufacturing on his tie? And in theory, we don't really need to assume that the individual wearing the tie, who will we'll say is Cooper, necessarily had to work at Ram Crew. They could have worked at another facility, perhaps Boeing or Tektronix, which is where they picked up the other elements and compounds that were found on the tie, and then happened to go visit somebody at Ram Crew to look over their latest developments in titanium alloys, and that's where they picked up these supposedly exotic molecules. Did the individual wearing the tie even have to work for an aircraft manufacturer or other associated high-tech company? Perhaps not. What would explain those aircraft and high-tech associated elements and molecules with spores associated with the pharmaceutical industry? Perhaps Cooper was in fact some type of government inspector or quality inspector or safety inspector or worked for a private contractor who carried out such inspections. Inspections that took him to a variety of businesses in the pharmaceutical industry as well as in the high-tech aircraft industry. And what about the arguments you see in all of these associated articles claiming that at the time titanium was extremely, extremely rare in manufacturing? Well, what does the history section under titanium say on Wikipedia? In the late 1950s and 1960s, the Soviet Union pioneered the use of titanium in military and submarine applications as part of a program related to the Cold War. Starting in the early 1950s, titanium came into extensive use in military aviation, particularly in high-performance jets, starting with aircraft such as the F-100 Super Sabre and Lockheed A-12 and SR-71. And of course, the last sentence refers to American aviation. So it really does seem like starting in the early 1950s in the United States and continuing on past the time of the Cooper hijacking, there must have been many, many people working with and around titanium at different facilities in different companies, not just one single small lab at a company in Pennsylvania. Again, note the phrase came into use extensively. So what about Eric Ulysses' conclusions here? I admire him as a dogged researcher on this very interesting subject, and I respect him for changing his mind on previous suspects when new evidence is presented. I think that looking at titanium-related clues is an interesting component that might help solve the mystery, but I think that you have to take all the other evidence found on the tie in as well, and I think that the other evidence points in many other directions. I think it's important to keep an open mind and try to look at everything, but sometimes when you only focus on one narrow slice of the pie, it can cause you to 
alter conclusions which are not supported by all of the facts. So what do you think? Do you think that Vince Peterson is all that good of a candidate? Or do you have your own favorite candidate for who might have been the Skyjacker? And no matter what you think, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I really want to hear from you, even if you completely disagree with what I have to say here. I made some other videos concerning Cooper, and I have a wide variety of other videos that I've uploaded, most of them dealing with personal finance and investing in stocks. I would love it if you looked at those, and please do subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and it just takes a second to click that subscribe button. And also, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, and of course, be sure to leave a comment. Thanks again for watching.